Let's bring the Senate Democratic Whip now, Dick Durbin. Senator Durbin, thank you for joining us this morning. You just heard Ian Panel right there. Putin shows no signs of backing down, at least at this point. What more can the U.S. do to put pressure on him? Well, I might add that Ukraine has uh, shown no signs of backing down either. And the United States, uh, through our president uh, and NATO alliance, are, are totally committed to this Ukrainian effort to stop Putin. The desperate things that he's doing now, killing innocent civilians and children, for goodness sakes, uh, he will have a stain uh, name in history forever for this. Well, you say we're totally committed, but as you know, President Biden and the West have ruled out a no-fly zone for right now. Several of your Democratic colleagues have called for sending these MiG-29s, these fighter jets, to Ukraine. They say that's going to give the Ukrainians a chance at a fair fight without significant risk of escalation. But you've been resisting that. Why are they wrong? Well, I can just tell you that we're asking for one-third of the Polish Air Force uh, to be sent into Ukraine. The people of Poland, of course, want to make certain that they're safe. They're only a few miles away from the devastation that's going on in Ukraine. There are other ways for us to provide surface-to-air missiles and air defenses that will keep uh, the, the Russians at bay in terms of their aerial attack. Uh, I think there are ways to do that that are consistent with the NATO alliance uh, and would not jeopardize expanding this into World War III or even worse. How about tougher economic sanctions right now, not only on Russia, but also potentially for China? We know that President Biden spoke with President Xi on Friday. It doesn't appear that China, at least not yet, is ready to back off their support for Putin. President Xi has to decide his place in history and China's place in the world. If they are going to be part of Putin and his uh, barbaric conduct in uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, he's going to run the risk of discrediting his own nation. He has to think twice about that. And I think the president's most recent communication really put it on the line to him, uh, that if he is going to secretly say uh, not, he's not taking a position and then quietly go ahead and provide the resources that Putin needs, uh, we're going to know it and we're going to report it. One of the things we've seen at home recently is, of course, inflation, higher gas prices across the board. President Biden has said that uh, the sanctions on Putin are at least part of the issue uh, there for the, causing the rise in the prices. But our next guest, Senator Barrasso, has taken that on. I want you to listen. Biden would rather turn to dictators like those in Iran and those in Venezuela rather than turn against the climate elitists who dictate the energy policy of that Democrat Party and of his presidency. So now he's trying to pass the buck to Vladimir Putin. What's your response? Well, I'll tell you, it's hard to deny that, that what we're doing, cutting off Russian sources of oil, won't have some impact on the United States. But uh, President Biden and his supporters are trying to find every way to reduce the impact of that. Governors are suspending their state uh, sales taxes on gas. Uh, there's conversation at the federal level as to how we can help families. But I think it is just completely wrong to, for us to blame uh, President Biden and his efforts to stop Putin and say that uh, th these are the reason why we're having inflation in this country. There are many other factors. Other countries are going through the same inflation. We've got to make sure that we're sensible not only about Putin, the war, and his Russian oil supplies, but also sensible in what my friend John Brasso calls these climate elitists. We are fighting and waging a war against climate change. It is a war which will decide what the American look, uh, the world looks like for the next generation. Let's take both of these very seriously. Finally, you're also chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson's confirmation hearings are set to begin. In the face of those hearings, uh, we are now seeing escalating attacks from some Senate Republicans like Josh Hawley, who set out a Twitter uh, series of tweets suggesting that Judge Jackson is somehow soft on child porn. It's been debunked by several independent fact-checkers. But what does that tell you about the confirmation fight ahead? Well, I'm not sure what it signals, but as far as Senator Hawley is concerned, Here's the bottom line. He's wrong. He's inaccurate and unfair in his analysis. Judge Jackson has been scrutinized more than any person I can think of. This is her fourth time before the Senate Judiciary Committee. And three previous times, uh, she came through with flying colors and bipartisan support. The last time as soon as just last year. And now uh, Senator Hawley is making these charges that came out of nowhere. 
The independent fact checkers like the Washington Post and CNN have discredited his claims already. They should have. There's no truth to what he says. And he's part of a fringe uh, within the Republican Party. This was the man who was fist bumping the murderous mob that descended on the Capitol on January 6th of last year. Uh, he doesn't have the credibility he thinks he does. Senator Durbin, thanks for your time this morning. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.